These are very exciting times, my friend. Very exciting and also very, very frightening because I have not seen... Serious, I'm not just, I'm not being hyperbolic here, but I've not seen a full frontal attack on a sitting president or president-elect since I don't know when. In fact, even the last time I saw something like this, even when they were going nuts over Bill Clinton, I mean, they, they tried everything to get rid of him, especially during the, you know, the impeachment years and, and during that, that, that awful, horrid, State of affairs, but I got to tell you something. <clears throat> it, it was it was then I thought it was pretty you know pretty serious, but not like not like this, because this is a multi-factored thing. The reason why it is, and what what is critical for people to understand, is that Donald Trump poses. I keep saying this term, and please forgive me if I'm using it too much, but he poses an existential threat to a lot of people involved. And what I mean by that is there has been a system where the presidents have pretty much come along and they are, as I've used this before, actors in the play. If you don't like Hamlet, don't blame Olivier, don't blame Rafe Fiennes or Kenneth Branagh, whatever his name is, blame Shakespeare. He wrote it. These are actors. These are people who are, who are interpreting the script they can't change it. They try to give it their own flair. They're given a little leeway. They can pause, certainly. They can, but they live in a pretty structured world where they can't change anything. Hillary Clinton would have been the quintessential archetypal proponent of the scripted presidency. Barack Obama, maybe close second, if not better. Obama compromised everything. Obama was the perfect puppet, actor, shill, Manchurian candidate, bar none, because of his countenance, his demeanor, his style. You get somebody who can make his constituents love him. Throw into it the race factor of it. Put in a black president. And anytime somebody brings something up, you have that added deflection tool of racism. Oh, it's critical. I mean, he used, it, he used everything there was, everything he had. And his, his um, acolytes and minions and, and fans did as well. I mean, it was to the point where it was, it was unseemly. You couldn't say anything about him. Sometimes you see it when anybody ever questions Israel. And there are some things that I've questioned about certain, you know, certain policies, as they do in Israel. Just read Haaretz, my God. But you can, you can, you know, have a problem with Netanyahu or Likud or Zippy uh, Livni or what, whoever you want to do with it, you know, whatever. And, and, and you're not anti-Semitic, but some will call you that. Same thing with Barack Obama. Oh, you're racist. Hey, was he born in this country? You racist. I'm not a racist. What are you talking about? If, remember Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover lived in the UK or Great Britain for a long time. Article 2 has a couple of provisions. 35 years old. Um, natural-born citizen and a resident for 14 years. That's the part people forget about. So you can't be you can't be born. Let's let's say you're born in New Jersey, of American parents. You're born in Trenton, and then immediately you move to the UK. Which is kind of sort of what Hoover did to an extent, Herbert Hoover. And let's say you then come back. You campaign abroad. You show up here, you come up within the last, let's say, five years of the, of the uh, dare I say, of, prior to the election, and you're elected president, and you've only lived here five years. But you were born here. You would not qualify under Article 2 because you have to be a resident at least 14 years. Nobody knows if it's 14 cumulative, 14 successive, 14 total. Nobody knows. The point is, if you brought that up, you would have a valid constitutional question as to eligibility, and that's what we should be talking about. But with Obama, oh my God, if you brought that up, you were a racist. And they threw it at you. You just don't like it because he's black. He's a black president. And it was very effective. Oh my God. We are so skittish. It's so scary about black. Oh my God. Black, white, race, um, gender, we're kind of getting there. Religion to an extent. Uh, Anti-Semitic, uh, African-American, you throw that term around. But you got to be careful when you do that, 
you risk the, the chance of habituation, which I've told you a million times, be very careful what verbal armaments you use. Because there are people, I know, for example, who couldn't even pronounce anti-Semitic. Uh, they're not, but they're called that because sometimes their, their complaints are so, so inartful, so coarsely, you know, uh, kind of sewn together that it comes across as uh, perhaps possessing something far more diabolical than some type of anti, um, let's say some Palestinian um, reference. Anyway, but but the point is, you got to be careful. Most of the time, people are not racist or homophobic or anti-Semitic or misogynistic or not. Some are, but most of the time, I've seen, they're really not. It's, I mean, people I'm talking to about for the most part. So, but what Trump does is, and what he's doing is very, very simple. It's very, very important to understand this. He poses a very serious threat. Number one to, oh, recently, the vaccine. Oh, my God. Getting Bobby Kennedy to even question vaccines. Do you know how huge this is? Look, I'm no epidemiologist, and I'm not an expert in uh, any of that. But I do not believe the CDC. Why? CDC is government. I do not believe anything that would pose or present a, a threat. Again, an existential threat to big pharma. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't believe, I should say, because if you, I mean, do you have any idea if there could be a causal link? And I'm thinking now as, as a trial lawyer, right? As a, do you have any idea what would happen if you were to go to trial and say that a pharmaceutical company put out into the stream of commerce a substance they knew to cause autism. They knew to be significantly linked to a variety. And when you say autism, that term is not, is, there, there are spectrum disorders and the like, but let's, let's just, just for the sake of a shortcut. Do you have any idea what would happen to that? Oh, you see... <laughs> In personal injury, when you deal with a brain-damaged baby case, this is the gazillions of dollars. Why? Long-term care, catastrophic injury. You look at the actuarial table. How long will this child live? How much care will he need? Throw into the, to the course of it, the cost of living and inflation. You have economists come in. And you can come up with monstrous verdicts. And if you had something similar to that, because let's face it, most of the time these autistic or, or spectrum disorder cases involve children, do you know what would happen? So consequently, the word was put out a long time ago through all of the donations and the lobbying and the control, you never, ever, ever expose us or allow us to be subjected to liability. You got that, Congress, or else the money dries up. Look at all the school shootings. Look at all that, for example. Look at Sandy Hook, for example. Look at the case. Look at, go down the list of all the people that were either known to, all the shooters, known to or suspected of either being on an SSRI or some type of psychiatric, psychotropic medication, and who was either under the influence of such or came off it or withdrew from it or whatever. Do you have any idea of how that, what that would do? Have any idea in terms of what it would mean to the stock of a company? All right, so I don't want to get too far off into that. So what does Trump do right away when he's campaigning? He, he, he's, he's, he's calling into question, maybe, just maybe, investigating this? Oh, my God. Now, I know people who get very upset with this. And they claim ownership to this. I know a friend of mine whose relative works in the business. And my cousin or my wife or my husband is a doctor or a nurse and they know 
and they don't like you. For some reason, it's like, well, what do you, what, what do you own this this topic? I know, how dare you? I'm, maybe they felt the same way about polio years ago. How dare you talk about polio? My cousin's got polio. Or if somebody that they know, maybe a family member or has a, a spectrum disorder, oh, how dare you have no, you can't talk about that. Oh, does your child have that? Yes, he or she does. Did they contract it through vaccines? Do you believe? No, but... So what's the matter? Don't talk to me about that. Don't, how dare you have no reason. People own these stories. I've known, I knew, I've met children of Holocaust survivors. Many, but just, it's fascinating. One in particular, I knew, felt like she owned the topic. You can't, don't you even, it's like, you don't even know what I'm going to say. Don't you dare. You don't know. I don't know what. People love to do this. They, they love this exclusive, being from Florida, being from Tampa, knowing a lot of Cubans. I've seen that also. Don't you talk about starting relations again with Cuba. Mom, Cuban, my family left. I don't, you have no reason. So we love to cut people off in terms of being able to opine or to weigh in regarding this. So Trump came along, hired Bobby Kennedy, who, by the way, if ever there was, I mean, you know, Bobby Kennedy, there's talk about baggage, the Kennedys, my God, but maybe in this particular case, he's pretty good at this, I guess, I don't know. Um, when he was out there trying to stick up for Michael Skakel, ooh, God, don't do that. There's this, there's this belief somehow that Camelot, we still believe in Camelot, and no, we don't. No, we don't. But that's Trump. What else does he do? He's questioning NATO. Now, an assignment. I want you to understand what NATO is. I want you to listen to it. Let me start off with a great point. I think one of our best scholars today, one of the best, easy to understand, to give the perspective on Russia, NATO, uh, the Baltic states, Ukraine, Crimea, uh, uh, Maidan, go down the list, in Syria to an extent, is Stephen F. Cohen. This is the husband of Katrina Vanden Heuvel. Vanden Heuvel. Jerry Lewis, Van Hover from the, the Nation. He's a professor emeritus of uh, Princeton and NYU, and he is just, he, they, and he's so good. Why is he good? He's good because he gives you a perspective that is so critical because you need this. And what you need to know, this is important, regarding NATO and Russia. This is your assignment. Start learning this now, is to hear the other perspective. When you hear your government and people in the mainstream media who basically are apparatchiks for the government, this is, I mean, they always make jokes about TAS and Pravda and RT to an extent, but if you want to see government propaganda, CNN. Oh, Fareed Zakaria, Christian Amanpour, CFR, globalist, trilateral, Brzezinski, Kissinger, Acolytes, minions, robots, apostles, uh, cult members, whatever. You want to see what the globalists think? Listen to Christian Amanpour, Fareed Zakaria, Abs, Christoph, Nicholas Christoph, uh, maybe to, to a lesser extent because his, his thing is a little bit a little off. Friedman, Krugman. I mean, down the list, if you want to hear people who are, by virtue of what they say, almost suspect, people that you can... I'm going to go on a limb now. People who you can almost eliminate immediately from consideration or who are agenda-laden, it is the aforementioned. Okay? And I want you to listen to a couple of things. Start with him. Go online. He and my friend and colleague, John Batchelor, B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R, on WABC, is on Audio Boom. Listen to their podcast, their, um, their um, debate. It is so intelligent, so rare. You're thinking to yourself, is this, is this mainstream media radio? Am I, is this WABC? I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't mean anything by that, but I'm saying it's very kind of heady, you know, even the music, the barber music, classical, you know, uh, magical singing and Baroque, you know, wow. And what they do is they provide you with the other side. And the other side is what's critical. 
Because you see, the people who are running the country are not interested in you and me. This is not about our safety, about our protection, about our peace of mind, about our, oh, no, 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 no. This is about a war machine. This is about a group of people who represent a, a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Let's call it globalism. And it's a, it's all money. All money, all control. It's oil, energy, rare earth metals, geo strategy, positioning, not ideology. Ideology has nothing to do with this. If you think they're about going out and spreading the American word, spreading the American dream, the American ideals about what we stand for, the city on the hill, if you think that, you're out of your mind. It'll work something like this. The West, it's just called like the West, top of the pyramid, is comprised of bankers, banksters. Let's just put this. This is the money unit. This is Wall Street, central banks, our central bank, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of International Settlements, the central bank of central banks, IMF, uh, uh, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, all of those money units. That's it. That's, and then those members of those particular organizations, including Chase Manhattan, you know, it's different tiers. You know, um, Jamie Dimon's and those guys, and City and whatever, and Bear Stearns. I mean, not Bear Stearns. Oh, my God, God I'm off my anachronism here. But, but uh, Goldman Sachs and that kind of thing. All right, fine. So they have to present political ideology which will then get you to demand normally military action which will bring about the particular change they want so that they can reap the benefits. Let's say for example Syria. We'll get to Russia in a moment but Syria is important. Here is the question that you always have to ask whenever there's a talk of re a regime change. And it goes without saying, it's never changed, it never ends, it never, it never varies. And that's simply this. Whom would you select to replace Bashar al-Assad in Syria? Do you want him? Or do you want some version of ISIS, Daesh, AQI, al-Nusra, Nusra, ISIS, ISIL? All, all the variations of this. What would you like? And they can't answer it. You want a democratic? You want democracy? You, you want that? And by the way, we're a republic, not a democracy. But they say, well, I want democratic, democratic elections. Oh, really? Like in Egypt? You want the Muslim Brotherhood? Is that what you want? You, you, anything they vote on, right? If you go to these countries and you allow them to vote, you're, you're satisfied with that. You have no problem with whoever whatever, however they decide to select. and You sure about that? No, you're not sure. That's the issue. That's why regime change is so ridiculous. But we don't care about ideology. We don't care about Syria. Now, when I say we, they, they don't care about that. They want Assad out. They want to put their people in. Why? They want the oil. They want the straight line to the Mediterranean off to Europe. This is important. Look, look at the criticality part. You've got to get maps. Always familiarize yourself with the map, with the geography. Geography is critical. I know that when most of us were in school, we didn't care. We didn't know Eurasia from, what are we talking about? You hear things all the time. You, you hear references to point. You, you, what, one of the best examples is you've got to see where Israel is located. You can't understand anything unless you understand where it's located. One of the fascinating issues about Israel, in addition that nobody talks about, and, I, and I've talked about hydro-imperialism and the fact that water is the new currency of war. That's exactly what it is. The Golan Heights, that's why it's so critical, because of water. See, water, the Tigris and the Euphrates, Iraq, it wasn't about 
well, yeah, oil, yeah, of course. But water, this, 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 this is the Fertile Crescent. This is, this is the Garden of Eden. This is where it was, ideally. This is irrigation. Libya was about water, too. The Nubian Sandstone Aquifer. No, I just mentioned a bunch, bunch of places. Global Research is a great site. Uh, Zero Hedge is pretty good, but Global Research has some fantastic uh, insight into others. Uh, I love Voltaire, net.org, Thierry Masson. Don't listen to these sites as verb, as as the Bible or the doctrine per se. Look at what and whom they cite. Alex Jones is very good for that. Let me tell you something right now. I, I must tell you. Every single day of your life, you must do a couple of things. Number one, you must have two tablespoons of freshly ground flaxseed in your oatmeal, your soup, your chili, your sandwich, whatever it is, your salad. Do it every day. Trust me, it is the greatest oxidizing agent, or antioxidant, I should say, excuse me. There is bar none. It is just... And you have to go to the various sites. Go to InfoWars. Now listen to me. See what they're saying. See what they're saying. Because it's, it's a story... And I'll have a, sometimes a very challenging, exciting, meaty topic. You know, um, Trump and uh, CNN fake news and Russian prostitutes. Okay, fine. Click it on. See where he cites. See where it goes. And you will learn from that different people. Some you can discredit if you want. Some you can listen to. Go to the Independent or go to other sites or go to... Other people to give you a different perspective. Because if you go to CNN, it's like junk food. It's not even junk food. CNN is not even food. It's like taking ground glass and styrofoam and trying to swallow it. It's not news in the least. It's not it. So don't worry about that. But I want you to go and I want you to open your mind. I want you to listen to Stephen Cohen. Listen to what he says about Russia. Go to uh, VoltaireNet.org. Alex Jones. Go to... Um, Go to and listen to, and I do this a lot, YouTube, I'm a big, look up lectures. Um, Yale University has some great ones, a lot, of, a lot of great open university, open classes, lectures, and listen to what academics say about this thing called history. Let me say a word about history. If you know me, you're going to hear me say this a gazillion times, and it's so perfect. History would be a wonderful thing if only it were true. And if you are going to be truly assessing what's happening right now and understanding what Trump is doing, what Russia means, who Russia is, what their beef is, what their perspective is, if you want to know what is the best for everybody, if you want to know the basis or bases, two things I can guarantee you. Number one, Whatever your government tells you, it's the opposite. I can guarantee you that. Not only question authority, reject what they say. It's the opposite. When they tell you, Ukraine, let me, you, you have to, I'm glad I brought that up. Ukraine, Crimea. Look at who invaded what. Look at what Ukraine is. Look at how they are interbred they are russian they are they are, look at what they're asking for look at who poroshenko is look who yanukovych was look how the west has we not we the west has done this professionally they're like the pinkertons they're amazing when it comes to trying to foment and to cause change and to cause rioting and tumult look also at the nationalistic, racist, Nazi. You think, <laughs> you think Trump is a white supremacist and a and some kind of a not neo-Nazi or Nazi? You ain't seen nothing until you look at what's going on in Ukraine and look who the people are. Look, look, look at the rise of that. Okay. So go to these classes. Listen to lectures on the history of Russia. Get a, get a feel for this. Okay, get, Understand something. Understand the Cold War. Understand what happened after the Cold War. Under, understand how 
Reagan, this, this, the, this, this, it's a fetish they have, the, the, the right for him. He wanted detente and rapprochement almost immediately. He talked to Gorbachev from the beginning. Listen to what Cohen says in particular. He'll say, oftentimes, we don't want a, a friend, we want a partner. It's very, very critical. We don't, you know, when Bush said, I looked into Putin's eyes and he's a good man and went to a barbecue. Well, well, stop it. Stop it. When uh, Yeltsin, when uh, Bill Clinton made a fool out of Yeltsin, made a fool out of him, uh, just stop this. Uh, know what they want, what they think. Understand their perspective. Go to RT. Go also, go to Sputnik. Go to, go to uh, Press TV, Iranian. I know, you're going to say, what? Go to Debka. If you want to see Jerusalem, you want to see Israel, go, go, go to Debka. That's basically, some people say it's Mossad. But Mossad is, it's like saying FBI. It's like, it's like ours, ours is, you know, we, we, we love the point figures. Oh, that, that's Mossad. We have CIA. What are you talking about? CIA owns these. Operation Mockingbird. Look that up. But, but Debka, D-E-B-K-A, uh, Jerusalem Post, Haaretz, for different things, to get that perspective. Get the Israeli point of view. Get, get the Palestinian point of view. Learn. Listen. See what they're saying. You don't have to agree with them. Understand what they're talking about. Understand why this, 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 this childishness that we have. Look how Intel works. Wonderful book called Gideon's Sword, I believe. It's, it's about Mossad. In the first part of the book, they talk about dossiers, real dossiers, not this BuzzFeed nonsense, but dossiers. And dossiers on stories, um, um, personality compilations of various leaders around the world. And there was a story in there about how Bibi's wife wanted to know all about Hillary. And they've got everything. Every nation has this. Who the leaders are, who's a drunk, who's a drug addict, who's gay, who's gay who has sexual propensities. Perhaps people who might be um, susceptible to a honeypot kind of a thing. Lured, cajoled, wheedled compromised, spied on. It's the way it's been done forever. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't run from it. Don't try to change it. Understand it. This is your goal. This is your, this is your thing. I want you to also understand and read up about how, what, the, what NATO is. NATO is basically an ancillary, almost a, a parallel unit of the UN. It's not these guys who were sitting around that we that help support us or we support to keep the world safe. Stop with this. Understand what NATO really is. It's almost a like a mirror image, so to speak, like an outboard version of the UN with independent powers and jurisdiction. It's it's an amazing uh, concept. There's also something you got to understand, which is critical, and that is that. Um. Hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, these folks who create this 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 illusion of um, Putin being evil and uh, horrid and the boogeyman and Boris Badenov, you're missing the point. This is propaganda. People do not consider themselves evil. People are not evil to themselves. Evil is what other people call you. Did you ever think Ronald Reagan was evil? Did you ever think Nixon was evil? I mean, evil. Maybe crazy, I don't think, but evil. Other people did. Viet Cong did. Vietnamese did. The North Vietnamese. South Vietnamese. The Viet Minh. Those in Indochina thought he was evil because he's bombing the hell out of these people. Stop using these terms. Understand what they feel. Understand what they think. Understand their frame of reference. Understand how they are concerned, what NATO, the existential threat it poses to them. And always ask yourself, how would we feel and react if we had military military and uh, weapons defense systems basically ringing our, our borders? What would we do if we had missile defense Right there, batteries of Russian or Chinese or whatever, a military around our, our area. And what if we said, oh, wait a minute, if Russia said or China said, oh, no, no, wait a minute, 
Canada asked us to be there. We're not there to bother you. We're there to protect Canada. Would you buy that? Would you buy that knowing your history? What if during the 20th century we had two revolutions, 1917 and 1991, and we based and really more, and that's our frame of reference? So let me just conclude by saying, you know, you can react all you want. You can listen to me, which is great. I appreciate that. But this, if you really want to be a truth warrior, you got to start learning. You're not going to learn this in school. And the internets, the series of tubes, provide all that you need. But you're going to have to go elsewhere. You're going to have to go to foreign and alternative media. And that's exactly what the ruling class and the deep state folks want to, to quash by calling it fake news. When in fact, their folks actually represent the fake news. Okay? Okay, good. That's enough with that. Don't forget to like this particular video. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget always to, remember this, to comment as you see fit.